The Salinas Valley was home to multiple, thriving communities over 350 years ago. Pueblo Indians forged a stable agricultural society whose members lived in apartment-like complexes and participated through rule and ritual in the cycles of nature. Two ancient southwestern cultural traditions, the ancestral Puebloans and Mogollon, overlapped in the Salinas Valley to produce the later societies at Abo, Gran Covera, and Coray. A permanent Spanish settlement was established in 1598 near what is now Española, New Mexico. By the late 1620s, Franciscan priests had made their way down to the Salinas Valley, where they established missions at the largest pueblos. These missions were only active for about 50 years. They were abandoned in the early 1670s due to a combination of factors that included drought, famine, disease, and raiding. After the Pueblo Indians left the area in the 1670s, the villages and associated 17th century Franciscan Spanish mission churches fell into disrepair. Over time, the wildlife moved into the remaining structures and started building burrows and establishing nests. Today, Abo, Gran Covera, and Coray are home to a myriad of plants and animals. Follow us along the trail into the ruins and let's see who we can spot. Wildlife can be easily startled by loud noises, so we'll keep our voices low and mainly use our senses of sight and hearing. Ooh, do you see what I see? Look at that sandstone wall. There's a bird sitting on it bending its legs and looking like it's taking a bow. Upon closer inspection, we can see that the bird is sandy colored with faint stripes on its tail and a long, slender bill. This bill is useful for eating insects. Rock wrens are identifiable by their frequent bowing or bobbing on their long legs and are often found on the walls of the ruins. Oops, while we were focused on the rock wren, we almost stepped on a small reptile darting along the path. This medium-sized lizard is mostly black with white stripes along the length of its body, spots in between the stripes, and a long tail. Chihuahuan spotted whiptails are among the most common lizards here at Salinas. Oh, we're in luck today. Not far from the Chihuahuan spotted whiptail is another, much larger lizard. This lizard is yellowish green with a black and white collar around its neck and spots all along its back. Collared lizards like this one are able to bask in the sun even during the heat of the day because they sit on the heels of their feet, thereby minimizing contact with hot surfaces. Birds are in the midst of fall migration, which means you never know who you might see flying or perched in the trees. As we walk around a bend in the trail this morning, there's a large bird sitting on the ruins. It looks like it's eating something. I wonder what this hawk caught. This hawk, who is likely a juvenile red-tailed hawk, is mostly dark brown with white patches on its head and back. Recently, it has been visiting the Abo picnic area, which often is a good place to look for wildlife. While we were admiring the hawk, a black beetle quickly walked towards us and lifted its hindquarters. Time to move away quickly before it sprays a foul-smelling acid at us. The scent emitted by darkling ground beetles acts as a natural defense against potential predators. A 
Another good defense against predators is camouflage. Walt walking the trails, it's easy to miss a horn lizard. Horn lizards are often very similar in color to the trails and soils at a bow, and since they often move relatively slowly, they're easy to miss. Some predators use camouflage too. Western diamondback rattlesnakes are easily spotted against the red trail, but they can be difficult to spot in the grass. Western diamondbacks can be recognized by their black and white striped tails and diamond-shaped heads, although it's not advisable to get close enough to tell the head has a diamond shape. Recently, we've been spotting monarch butterflies at a bow and corai. The monarch butterfly uses the milkweed plant as its only nursery. Monarchs lay their eggs on the underside of milkweed leaves. When the larvae hatch, the caterpillars eat the leaves. The milkweed plant is mildly toxic. By eating this plant, the caterpillars become toxic themselves, which deters predators. At Salinas, we are currently in the process of putting in pollinator gardens. These gardens will be used to attract more butterflies and other pollinators to the sites. Although not frequently seen at Salinas, greater roadrunners occasionally stop by. Roadrunners can reach speeds of up to 26 miles per hour while pursuing prey. Typically, the diet of roadrunners includes insects and lizards, although they can also kill and eat rattlesnakes. Phylogenetic research has shown that roadrunners are a type of cuckoo bird. Yikes! A tarantula hawk wasp just buzzed by us. Although the shiny, blue-bodied tarantula hawk wasps with orange wings usually aren't a threat to humans, when they do sting, it packs a strong punch. Tarantula hawk wasps engage tarantulas in a fight to the death. Should the tarantula lose, the tarantula hawk wasp will paralyze it and inject its eggs into the tarantula. When the eggs hatch, the larvae will eat the tarantula from the inside out. This summer, the Mission Church at Abo was home to a family of barn owls. Barn owls usually nest in either man-made structures or natural openings. They don't build traditional nests. Instead, over time, they trample down owl pellets which form a nest for their young. Finding owl pellets or small bones on the ground is a good indication that owls are or have been nearby. We keep talking about owl pellets, but what exactly are they? When owls eat small rodents, birds, or reptiles, they can't digest the fur, feathers, or bones. Instead, they regurgitate these indigestible materials, which resemble small, furry, feathery eggs. If you dissect an owl pellet, you can determine what it has been eating. We have found the remains of lizards, kangaroo rats, and bats in the owl pellets at Abo. Our three barn owlets have now fledged, but hopefully our barn owls will return to Abo. We didn't have enough time to talk about all of the wildlife you could encounter at Salinas. During your visit, Keep an eye out for other birds, mammals, and reptiles, such as the ones being shown now.